My name is Bonnie LeBaron, and today I want to talk about the vSCSI to MPIV migration tool. Um, a lot of our customers want to move from vSCSI to MPIV, but they don't want to take an outage. And so in order to do this, if you add duplicate storage with MPIV, um, you can mirror in the LVM, and then you can remove the vSCSI storage, and you'll be on your MPIV disks. Um, it's not anything magic going on in this in this script. Um, this just helps everything go along faster and easier than it would if you had to do it by hand. So let's take a look. Um, any one of these on the menu, any one of the uh, options, you can come back to at any time. You do not have to do them um, in order. Well, you don't have to do them sequentially while you're on, but you do, you can come back to them anytime you'd like to. Um, so if you want to stop and go check on something or take a break, you can come back to it. So I entered my HMC, and now I'm entering my, um, my HMC password. And it brings up your managed systems, and I'm going to pick the only managed system I have. Um, and then you get to pick your client. And I'm going to pick client 4. So here's the menu, and I'm going to grab my LUN IDs because you want your LUN IDs and sizes so that you can give those sizes to your um, SAN admin and he can give you duplicate storage. So the um, output is put into a directory at the name of the client at LUNList.out, and then it's asking, do I want to create my VFC adapters? And I do. So it goes out and it checks to see whether or not there's any adapters out there already. And it does see that I have four virtual fiber channel adapters. Um, so do I want to keep and use those or do I want to create new? Now, it wouldn't be any fun if I didn't create new today, so I'm going to create new. So how many VFC adapters would I like? Um, best practice would be to have at least two per VIO. So. For my VIO, do I want to pick my server adapters or do I want to use the next available? And I'm going to use the next available for my VIO. But for my client, I want to pick the next available because we have standards on our clients. So here I'm going to pick 10 and 12 for VIO 1 and 11 and 13 for VIO 2. Now it's going to create my adapters. So what's going on in the background is it's going to go out to the client. It's going to dynamically allocate um, four virtual fiber channel adapters. And on the VIOs, it's going to do the same. It will also um, run Config Manager and Config Dev, and it's going to save those current configurations to your current profile. So I'm going to pause the video for a second so we don't watch paint dry, and I'll be back in just a moment. Two things I wanted to mention before we move on is the reason I didn't pick, um, I didn't want to pick my server adapter on my VIO is because with LPM, it's going to move over and it's going to pick an available um, adapter. So um, it really doesn't matter what I pick because if I ever LPM, it would change or it very well could change. The second thing I wanted to mention is my fiber channel errors here. The reason why you see those is because I haven't mapped um, my VFCs to my VFC host yet, and that's why you see that child device missing. But it's nothing to worry about. We're going to um, map those here in a moment. So would we like to map the VFCs? Yes, we would. So basically it's going to bring in LSM ports to show us how many, um, how many connections we have on each physical fiber channel adapter. Um, so for VIO slot adapter 2, which physical fiber channel adapter would I want to map to? And I'm going to map to 1, because that's going to be my fabric A. And so for VIO 1 on um, slot adapter 3, I'm going to map to 4, and that's my fabric B. And that's on two different cards so that I'm redundant. So on VIO2, um, slot adapter 2, I'm going to map to 2. And to 3. 
on slot adapter 3. So now it asks, would I like to collect my WWPNs? And yes, I would. So this is the WWPNs of my virtual fiber channel adapters I just created. So now the system's ready to allocate the MPIV storage. What you want to do is give both of these files to your SAN admin. So that's going to give him your new WWPNs and the size of the LUNs that he needs to create. And then once you've done that, you can return to the program. So now that we're back at the menu, if your SAN admin needs help with seeing your WWPNs on the switch, um, we do have the function here, would you like to log in your virtual WWPNs? Now, if you log them in, then he's able to see them. So I'm going to say yes, and it will go out and if you, it will log in any WWPNs that belong to that client. And so he will be able to see them on the switch. Okay, so now we're ready to, once you have all your storage carved out and you're, you're zoned, we're ready to mirror. So let's go to mirror. So at this point, you want to make sure you have some kind of multipathing software installed. Um, that could be PowerPath, that could be SDDPCM, my favorite's MPIO, which comes native, natively with AIX. So yes, I have zoned my lens. So it's running Config Manager to introduce the new LUNs, and it's, it found two volume groups, and it wants to know, do I want to mirror one or both, or just my data VGs? So I'm going to do both, root and data. So the mirroring process for me here is going to be very, very quickly, but for you it might take some time. So if you want to put in your email address so that it can send you an email, whether or not things were successful or not, um, it will, if mail is configured, it will send you an email. So, once again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little pause so we don't watch paint dry, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so both VGs have been mirrored at this point. Um, you can see that after the mirror VG for root VG that the script modifies the boot list, it runs your boss boot to create the boot device, and um, it sends a mail. Then on data VG, it's just going to mirror. Um, mirroring has been successful, and so the program says, let's take a minute and verify all as well. So let me break for a second, and I'll pull up and show you that everything's mirrored. As you can see here, that root VG, um, under the PVs, everything is mirrored, and if you look at the PPs, everything looks good. You can also see that everything is synced, um, so that's really good news there. So let's go back to our program. And so it asks, are we ready to continue and break the mirror? Now at this time, if you wanted to take a break and you wanted to break your mirror on another day or at another time, you could, and you could come back to the menu, but we're going to break ours today. So it goes out and it finds VGs with SCSI disks, and it does verify that all VGs are synced before it does anything. So the first VG we're going to break is data VG. So it lets you choose which ones you want to break. So the mirror has been broken. So one second, let's check over on our other system and make sure that the mirror is really broken for that. And you can see down at the bottom um, that the Bonnie LV only has one PV and it is, it's still synced and so that we're good. Okay, let's go over and it's asking, would we like to clean up our vSCSI disks? And yes, we would. And so what this is going to do is it's going to go out and try to clean up anything that it can that was just removed. So it's removing HDisk1, which was what our... Um, Data VG was on on SCSI, and then it's going to go out to the VIO and it's going to remove the disk and the vhost if it can. So our vhost can't be removed because we have our other disk assigned to that vhost, and so um, it's just letting us know that it still has backing devices and it can't remove it yet. Um, there's one SCSI mirrored VG left, and that's going to be root VG, and it asks us, do we want to continue, and I say yes. 
So it goes out again and it finds all the VGs and it found root. And so we're going to break the mirror on root. So it's going to locate the SCSI disks to unmirror. It's going to unmirror root VG. Once again, we're going to create a new boot list on here. We're going to run bossboot.ad um, on the new hdisk2. Um, we're going to remove. After we unmirror, we also reduce the VG. Um, and so basically, if you were to look right now, um, which we're going to do, you would see that we have been broken. LSVG minus L root VG. And you'll see that everything has been broken in your PVs. Everything is synced and we're ready to go. If we look at um, LSPV here, you'll see that we have HDisk zero, which was our other, um, our other SCSI disk, and we're gonna remove that here in the cleanup. So here we go. Would we like to clean up the vSCSI disks? Yes, we would. And so here is, like I mentioned, it's going to re um, remove the disk from the client. It's going to go out to the um, VIO. It's going to remove the disk. It's going, first it's going to um, unmap the disk, and then it's going to remove the disk and the vhost if the vhost is no longer being used. Um, for all three, the two VIOs and the client, it's going to go out and save the current configuration so that when we reboot or um, in the future, we won't have those SCSI adapters still in our profile. So I'm going to pause again so we don't watch paint dry, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so now it has unmapped um, the disks, as I mentioned. It deleted everything, and it did go out and it checked to see if that vhost had any more disks mapped to it, and it didn't, so it removed them. Um, it also removed uh, the slots, the virtual adapter slots on the VIO and on the client. It saved the current configs and it says all mirrored VGs are complete. So um, right now you go out and you check your TK client to lunlist.post and that's going to give you the unique ID and the HDisk of all the um, devices that we just removed off the VIOs. You can give that to your SAN admin and he can unzone and he can take that storage back so that you no longer have the duplicate storage. At this point in time, everything is successful and it's going to return us back to our menu. So, um, uh, one second, let me pause one more time. Okay, so um, like I said, um, there's really no magic going on in this script. It just takes um, all the commands and puts them into a script to make it a little bit easier for you. After you finish the one, you can do another one. Um, if you're interested in the vSCSI to MPIV migration tool, we can deliver this as part of a lab services engagement um, at your customer site. And so if you would like to um, contact me, I'm at blibero at us.ibm.com, or you can contact my opportunity manager, Stephen Brandenburg at sbrandon at us.ibm.com. Thanks for spending some time with me. Um, talk to you later.